Okay, so in this last uh, video in this series about um, table scripting and so forth, <clears throat> I wanted to show you something really cool that you could do. It's kind of fun. Uh, not that what we've been doing, you know, up to this point hasn't been fun. But let's say, for example, you know, you like the idea of using one table to script another table. Maybe you just replace a few of the fields and, you know, a few of the initials, stuff like that. <clears throat> that's all fine, but let's say that you have dozens and dozens of lookup tables that you have to make, and they're all similar. In other words, maybe you want them all to have the same look and feel. You know, you know that for every lookup table, you're going to have a key field, a display, a description, a visible order created and modified. The only things that would really change are possibly the name of the table, of course, and perhaps this prefix. Well, what could you do? One of the things that I did is I made myself a little stored procedure. It's actually not little. No, it's sort of little. <clears throat> but um, this stored procedure, we'll just open this up and say modify. And this one here, I just happen to call it create table basic. What's going to happen is I'm going to pass in the name of a proposed table and then also a prefix to come before all the field names. Uh, these other fields don't really matter. This is if I wanted to do it across different databases, but we're not even going to worry about those. We're not even going to address these other things. But all we're doing down here, <clears throat> we, uh, we're, take, we're declaring a, a string SQL, and we're setting it to 2,000 characters, and that should be plenty for what we're doing. But as you can see here, we're using a certain database. We're passing in the database name, and this whole entire thing is just one monster SQL statement. We're going to be creating a table with the name that we gave it, you know, database.dbo.table name. And then here, we're creating all of our fields um, with all the data types that we want, but we're also appending or prepending the, um, the prefix that we want for our table. In the case of a units table, we would use the, the letter U. But in addition to that, down here, what we're also doing, because we want this script to save us time so we don't have to go back and update the table and change anything, we're also adding a few constraints. For example, for the visible field, we're defaulting it to true. For the order field, we're defaulting it to a number. For the uh, created, which is a date time, we're, we're defaulting it to the current date and time. So basically, that's, <clears throat> that's what this stored procedure does. It takes a little bit to set it up, and it's a little trial and error. But now that that's set up, watch how slick this is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table called product types. And I'm going to make the, uh, the prefix PT. Now, let me just go here and uh, refresh this, you see there's no, there's no table called product types. But when I go here, as soon as I hit execute, bam, a second later, now let's go to tables and then go like this. And now here we are, product types. This table just got created instantly from that stored procedure. How slick is that? So again, just so you can see it real quick, all you're doing is basically copying the script that you would have used to make a table and you're just putting it as a string really and then you're just plugging in the prefix for, because the things that are going to vary every time you run the script are you know what's the name of the table possibly what's the name of the database and then what's the prefix that you're going to put in front of your field names and then it works like magic well half magic 